completing the square is pretty cool stuff. Maybe I just think that way because I'm kind of nerdy. But uh, here's the problem is, all, all the problems that we've looked at are kind of set up for us already. Completing the square allows us to force the problem to be solvable. But we'll follow the process on this, okay? I'm just going to set up the next problem that we're going to do. And then we'll follow this step by step. And we'll kind of explain what each of these mean. Because the step three right there, complete the square for the resulting binomial by adding the square of half of the coefficient of x to both sides of the equation. That sounds really confusing when we say it out loud like that. But in a problem, hopefully it will make a little bit more sense. All right, so this is the problem we're looking at. Um, the nice thing about this one is there, there is no coefficient of x squared. So we don't have to divide anything by that coefficient. I mean, there's a phantom one there, but we don't really need that either. So looking at step two, isolate all variable terms on one side of the equation. Well, what are the variable terms? I've got an x squared and a 2x, or a negative 2x. So that negative 2 is right now on the wrong side of the equation. In addition to that, and we should probably check this, is negative 2, let's say that we just wanted to factor this thing out, right? So I need two factors of negative 2 that would add up to this negative 2 right here. Can't do it, right? Negative 2 and 1, 1 and negative, I'm sorry, negative 1 and positive 2. No good. Okay, so before we would say this cannot be factored. That is no longer the case. All right, so we know that minus 2 is on the wrong side of the equation. So we're going to have to add 2 to both sides. And this looks a little funky right now. We've got x squared minus 2x. And now this equals a positive 2. Um, now it says that, that long sentence, complete the square for the resulting binomial. The binomial here is this x squared minus 2x. By adding, so that hopefully is pretty self-explanatory. We're going to add the square. So we're going to square something. Just don't really know what it is yet. Of half of the coefficient of x. So we're going to square half of the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x right now is this negative 2. So I'm going to take that negative 2. It says we're going to take half of that. So I'm going to divide that by 2. But see how I've done that to one side of, equ of the equation? I need, to, I need to do it to the other side as well. Otherwise, it unbalances the equation completely. Because remember, if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other side as well. All right, so let's evaluate that. Uh, nothing else changes, by the way. I x squared minus 2x. But now this is plus. Let's look at negative 2 over 2 squared. So this uh, negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. But if I square that, I end up with a positive 1. So I get a plus 1. And this now equals 2 plus 1. Now this is what we love about completing the square, is that since I'm adding one here, I have what can be factored out into a perfect square binomial, right? For example, one can be split up into negative one and negative one, which both add up to that negative two. So that gives me x minus one times x minus one equals, and over there I had uh, 2 plus 1, which is 3. And uh, narrowing this down, I've got an x minus 1 squared equals 3. Well, to solve this, because now we're pretty much at we, where we were before, uh, factor the resulting, which we did, we factored it. Now we're going to use the square root property to solve for x. So in other words, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I have the absolute value of x minus 1 equals the square root of 3. 
And this now splits up into two equations, x minus 1 equals the square root of 3, and x minus 1 equals the negative square root of 3. And to finish this thing off, let's just add 1. Well, we'll add 1 everywhere. And this is what we get. And those are our two answers. That kind of goes back. That's a really good question, though, Megan, is... See how this, this negative 1 was squared right there? And how it kind of became uh, minus 1 right there in the parentheses. It became in, it was part of the binomial which was squared. Uh, that pattern is going to continue for the whole thing, uh, for, the whole, for the whole lesson, for all of the completing the square problems. Uh, whatever is inside this parentheses, as long as we take what is the actual coefficient of x, and divide that by 2, that number will always be in whatever we come out with, even if it is a fraction.